Hello, everybody. My name is Janet Belsky, and I'd like to introduce you to the sixth edition of Experience in the Lifespan, my pinnacle, pinnacle edition of my life. I've been teaching this class for almost 45 years, and I love it. And I also love to write. I care deeply about having each sentence flow in the best way. My book is different because it's constructed to unfold like a story. It flows from chapter to chapter. It tries to get students immersed in the narrative as they read. One strategy I use is I get students to think about life from the perspective of people of different ages. What's it really like to be a toddler? What's it like to be 95 and coping with the ADL impairments of advanced old age? I actually have a personal feeling about this because I was trained as a clinical gerontologist and I worked in a settings like nursing homes for years. I also want to get students involved in the narrative in their own lives. So I've devised, and it's been a lot of fun, creative checklists where they can say, how does this section of relationships apply to me? The idea is, as they get done with the chapter, they'll say to themselves, gee, I didn't have to study for this. I really just grasped it because I was emotionally involved. At this point, I want to tell you that I have a wonderful adjunct to my writing in Worth's new feature called Achieve, where you can have a tremendous amount of ancillaries that go along that will help the students memorize the content of the chapter and also apply what they are learning to their own lives. Okay, so let me begin uh, just by talking a little bit about the structure and just to lay it out. Every chapter, it's a highly structured book, begins with a setting the cultural and historical context section. What were things like in the past? How do different societies view what we're talking about right now? The end of each chapter and the end of each major section has an applied interventions piece where I talk specifically about what are the implications of the research for our own lives. As you get done with this book, or maybe even the middle of the book, you'll say, this is really, really a culture-focused book. And I believe, personally, that it's the most applied textbook in the field. It's relating directly to how we can change people's lives. Okay, so what's new? Well, what's new is that I have been working 24-7 to update this book and make it the most cutting edge. It has almost 600 citations just from the last three years from the previous edition. I've updated everything, I've made everything fresh, but I'm also looking at how I can focus this book in a better way. One thing that I'm doing is I am paying central attention to ethical and moral issues in development in childhood in a way that I haven't before. I have a section, for instance, on what does it mean to be a bystander? What considerations would have you intervene when a classmate is being bullied? All of these are creative checklists that I have devised based on the research itself. This book is very focused on the digital revolution. How have computers affected children's lives? What about social media? I go through each chapter particularly in childhood with an end section on how the digital revolution has affected us. It's very, very balanced for positive and for negative, and they get a full picture of that. Okay, the bottom line though is, students after they read this book will be emotionally involved in every aspect of life, and they'll also see how what binds us together as people is more important than what differentiates us our species goes together, passes through the lifespan as a unity, and human development is glorious, it is common to all of us, and it transcends any differences from culture and historical time. I want your students to think in a more caring, richer way about human life.